got like this to know him. Mm -hmm. Now there are a certain point we're supposed to know that God can do everything. Yes. Yes. But when God does a miracle, Come on. and then has a miracle walk into you, Come on. Jesus. then has a miracle stand in front of you. Thank you. Yeah. When the God was really don't really have a reason why. Right. And all you can do is this. No sense is that because if it was your child and God called by Thomas, you would be. Yes. 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 Yes.
Whatever you need for love is offered to you the time right now. Because God's already shown you that He's a way maker, He's a miracle worker, that He's always working for you. That He's a God of grace, He's a God of a second chance, that He's a healer, that He's an encourager, that He can strengthen you, that He can build you up, that He can hold you. God's already shown you that already today. So whatever you might be going through, whatever the situation is, whatever the issue is, I'm here to pray with you now.
can't even imagine. How it must have been. I got the email when it happened that they sent out. Unresponsive, no heart rate, no breathing. No reason, just people don't understand a lot of times what we're going through. But if you're not rooted, sometimes when things come, it blows you over or it uproots you, it takes you out. Ephesians 3 16. 19. I got a couple of translations. I'm going to read it out of the Amplified first. Yeah, it's not there. It says, May he grant you out of, him, out of his treasury of his glory to be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power in the inner man by the Holy Spirit himself, indwelling in your innermost being and personality. Verse 17 says, May Christ through your faith, actually dwell, settle down, abide, make his permanent home in your hearts. May you be rooted deep in love and founded securely on love, that you may have the power and be strong to apprehend, grasp with all saints. God's devoted people, the experience of that love. What is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth of it? That you may really come to know practically through experiences for yourselves the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience, that you may be filled through all your being unto all the fullness of God. May you have the richest measure of divine presence and become a body wholly filled and flooded in itself. Can you bet verse 16 back up there? May he grab you out of the riches of his glory. A lot of times what we don't realize is that we appear here for God's glory. I know we don't think about it. We think we're pit here for our own life. We're pit here for, you know, our own success. But you are pit here for God's glory. And what happens is if you're not giving God glory, then you're giving the enemy glory. People think there's a line in between. There is no line in between. Either you are giving God the glory or you're giving the enemy glory. Well, I'm not giving him glory, I just don't give God glory. If you're not giving God glory, you're giving the enemy glory. Well, I'm just glorifying God. If you're giving yourself glory, you're giving the enemy glory. There's one thing about God that he will not share. He will not share his glory. What is due to him is his glory. Why? Because he's God. I know we got the thing, yin and yang, the good and the bad, and the devil and God. There, there is no such thing as that. Let me give you this up. It's God and God by himself. Right. The devil is not on the playing field with God. God is not warring with the devil. Yeah. Yeah. Let me clear that myth up. Okay. The devil is no match for God. Jesus said that's for when he died. That's right. And when he got up, he said, Now all power is given unto me in the heaven and in the earth. Yeah. Yeah. Death, where is the sting? Pray, where is your victory? I've got the keys now. The enemy has no other power. That's right. He has no more dominion. So if I'm not giving God glory, who am I giving it to? The enemy. So he said, by granting out the riches of his glory. People love to get up here on this platform with this mic. They think it's a glorified position. But really all they see is the microphone and just think that being before you is a glorified position. What they don't see is all the heartache. What they don't see is all the pressure. 
See, being up here has nothing to do with me at all. Because if you would ask me, I feel I could tell you I'm not qualified. But it's not based on my qualification. It's based on his calling. What I've learned to do is I've learned not to worry about what other people say I'm qualified, but I learned to rely on that he called me. I answered the call. If I answer his call, then I don't, I don't do anything for my glory anymore. See, I can still be Pastor Lucius without being up on this platform. Because the platform doesn't make me Pastor Lucius. The platform is so that God can get glory. That's right. What we got to realize is, is God wants glory. People don't understand. They look at, and I used to watch, I watched T.D. Jakes when he first started. I was like, good gracious. But then I heard his testimony. Yeah. Of what he went through and how he got started. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll go with that. <laughs> we look at people now, we don't know the story. They don't, we don't know the hearts. We don't know what it took to get there. We just see them on the platform and think that they're getting glory. They're not getting glory. God is getting glory. That's right. They sculpted us nobody and made us somebody. So he may grant you out the riches of his glory. What are the riches of God's glory? Jesus Christ is the riches of God's glory. The key to it is, is I have to first accept Jesus. Now there's some things that have happened. There's some shortcomings. There's some falls. I've got my knees dirty. I've got, I've got my elbows dirty. You know, we say you fall against your knees dirty. I've barely got my elbows dirty. Mm -hmm. But I love God. Come on. Because he's a God of second chances. If you were asked me 10 years ago when I would be a pastor, I would tell you, wait, Jose. <laughs> Ain't for me. You asked me five years ago, right now would I be pastor? I said no. You asked me three years ago, I was still told you no. Especially not during a pandemic on your first year. No. But it's not based on me, it's based on God. God knew what he wanted, but he called me. Because everything I do, God gets glory because when people know you and know your past, and then they see what God has done, what God has done in your life, who gets the glory? You or God? God. What do you mean? People, it ain't because of me. <laughs> I can tell you. My daughter tells me sometimes that, you know, say, man, it's just hard. Or she said, you're rude. Sometimes I'm just blunt. I say I'm blunt. I just say what I'm, sometimes I just say it. No, I don't cuss, no, I don't do that, but I just say it. And she'd be like, really? <laughs> but God takes that still and he uses me. Because it's not about me. See, when God calls you, it's not about you, it's about him getting glory from you. The problem is nobody wants to get glory from God, people just want to be seen. By others. I'd rather be seen by God in a room by myself. They've been seen on a stage with 10,000 people yelling my name. Mm -hmm. Because you know what? I've already got my reward. But in that closet with him, oh my gosh. The Bible talks about being in his presence. There's a song I sent to my staff, and I, it's being in God's presence. It's something about being in God's presence. You don't have to be in church to be in God's presence. I'd be in my car in God's presence. Yeah. You can be in the bathroom in God's presence. Yeah. You can be outside in God's presence. That's right. I'm in God's presence more when I'm outside. Mm -hmm. Before I became a pastor, I used to be on the lawn over here more. I spent hours out here more. Playing music more. God spoke to me more then. Any other time in my life. That's what God told me to be pastor here. That's what he gave me a glimpse of what was going to happen. But he may grant. See, the problem is God grants us things. 
But the things that God grants us is for his glory. Even if it's bad, it's still for God's glory because if you're still living, God is still good and you still got a second chance. What we don't realize is God grants us out of the riches of his glory. It's his glory. It's not ours. He grants it to us. It's like a law. He gives it to you. Yes. To be strengthened. This is what I used to work out. I haven't worked out in a long, long. Mr. Jacobs used to. The school started. He used to be kept to actually say, you work out. Well, sir, I ain't lift weights since 2006, 7. I don't live like so long. I don't know how to live. Give it up. I, I give it up because when my son caught me and he passed me on the bench, I got up and I, and I said, I said, I don't live another way. <laughs> Y'all laugh. Okay, it was a heavy laugh. See, so I'm going to laugh and buzz and laugh. We both did 345, and he took it up instead of 10, he took it up 20. 365, that's a big jump. When you're over 300, I couldn't get it. He got up with ease. When I got up, I said, That's it. He said, What you mean? I said, I'm done. He said, What you mean? I said, That's it. I'll never forget it. He said, Why? Wow. I said, Because my whole goal was to get you past me. Wow. I don't need to do it no more now. You surpassed me. So I stopped working out. So if I was always strengthening myself, I used to love to work on my shoulders and my tricep, strengthening my body. But the whole time I'm strengthening my body, I never thought about strengthening my spirit. I only worked out to strengthen my body. So, because people look at me now, they still think I work out because of my arm. I don't work out. I live forts. I live sometimes school. I live uh, 32 hours. Yeah, you know? That's all I'm lifting. If it's happening in the game club, I ain't lifting. Not to work out. No reason to. My wife told me she like me just like I am. I ain't got to impress nobody else. I don't know. A person can't get a brand new way set. When you my daughter, you didn't die. I won't touch her. She can tell you. I got dumbbells. Bought a whole salad. I don't touch it. I don't want to work out on the natural anymore. Well, mm -hmm. I want to work out on my spiritual. Yeah. Because the most important thing is if I work out on the natural and get all this looking, a teen body, but I have a zero spirit. That means I'm bad. You can't even stand and be around me because I'm so that What good was it do to have a great body if I can't be around nobody because my insides are all messed up? Yeah. A lot of times we focus on the wrong things. He says to be strengthened and spiritually energized with the power of his spirit in your inner self. Romans 8 and 11 says, if that same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, if fit be in you, it will quicken. It will bring to life you. That means inside of you there will be something that transforms in you. Yeah. Am I transforming? Yes, every day I'm getting better. That's right. I'm not the same man I was last week. I hope I'm not the same man I was yesterday. Mm -hmm. Because every day I'm supposed to get better and better and better. So his spirit has to work within me. Why? It's to build me up on the inside. Remember when Jesus was talking and they questioned Jesus about his disciples, you know, eating the bread out of the temple, and, and Jesus told them, he said, it's not what goes in. You know, we, we think about the stuff we put in our That's That's not what follows us, what comes out. There's a lot of people that got some stuff in there. It's bad. So I want to talk to you about strengthening your inner man, but you first have to be rooted. In dwelling your innermost being and personality. My personality is unique. There's only one of me. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> I got an A-Pack court, but she's done with me. She grew up with me all her life. 
And I haven't changed as far as my personality. I mean, I'm, I'll be honest, I will laugh at your expense. I'm still going to be past solution. Well, I'm going to laugh at you if you do something or you fuck. I'm going to laugh. That's my personality. I will, I'm going to always laugh. My daughter, you tell me, I will laugh at anything. And I'm not going to laugh behind your back. I'm going to laugh right in your face. So you can laugh with me. Because I'm going to laugh so hard that you're going to start laughing too. But that's my personality. I think about my personality that God uses. Come on. I can be stubborn. I know some of y'all don't believe that, but yes, I can. Because if I set my mind to do something, there's nothing you can do to stop me from doing it. Even if I fail trying 10 times, I'm still going to keep going until I get it done. Even if you tell me I can't do it, I will keep going. My personality got to use it. But what am I doing? I'm strengthening my inner man so God can use everything about me for his glory. Even my personality that causes me to laugh at you and mess with you, I mess with call. Sometimes I feel bad because I mess with call so bad. I do. I mess with I call Carl just to mess with her. I will call her just to mess with her, just to laugh. That's just, I love to have fun. I love to live. Why? Why am I going to be mad all the time? But I have fun. But God takes my personality and he uses it. Uh, I have a little OCD. Uh, who wakes up in the middle of the night at 3 o'clock in the morning and takes all your clothes off your rack, take them in the house, cut the TV on, music, and take them Liquid starts all your clothes, Nobody. hang them up to the fence so they can dry, and then iron them until 6 o'clock in the morning. My God. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry to tell you. The weird personality I do it all the time. My wife can tell you, I would do it all the time. But God still can take that and use it. That's right. I, I mean, I'm different. And God loves it. He loves my uniqueness. And I'm rooted in this thing. <laughs> my wife has been with me for 36 years. It ain't going to change now, baby. She can tell you. This is the way I've always been. I used to iron and press clothes to go play basketball on the basketball court. Starts with creases in them. To go play basketball on the court. Just to get them soaking wet and dirty. And come back home and wash it and start it again. They go to play ball again in two more days. But God still sees fit to use you. I'm different. We're not the same. We're different. But God's looking for a person to be different for his glory. Yes. Yes. See, the key about being different is I'm not being different for me. Because if you you stare at me long enough, you find something about me you don't like. It's cool. I can talk all the time things about me people don't like. Most of my life. They don't bother me no more. Why? I know who I am. I know who I belong to. I know he's called me. That's right. And I'm comfortable with me. Amen. So there's nothing nobody else can say about me to make me feel bad about myself. Right. Why? I strengthen my inner man to where when people talk about me, it's like water off the door. Come on. So now it doesn't bother me as bad. So as you begin to understand, the first is his glory. God does everything for his glory. Nothing's done for your glory. God wants to strengthen you. This is the key. In order to be strengthened sometimes, you have to be grounded deep. Roots got to be grounded deep. I'm going to go over the roots. Reinforce. I've been reinforced. That's how I've been reinforced. I've gone through a lot in the last three years. God has reinforced me. He settled me. I've had some heartache. I've had some disappointments. And God was still right there to carry me through. What he did, he reinforced me. Why? Because I didn't focus on my situation or my issue. I focused on him. 
And because I focus on him, he reinforced me. And then he fills you with his mighty power. And your inner man and with the Holy Spirit roots. The part of the plant that grows on the ground gets water from the ground, holds the plant in places. Roots are the gnarled, leafy part of a plant's body that does not wear any nose. It is an orchid that lies below the surface of the soil. Roots can also be aerial, growing above the surface of the ground or aerated, which means floating over the surface of water. Roots are responsible for providing the stems and the leaves with adequate water and nutrients for their growth. Another definition for roots is the cause or source of something, something that is in the original source. And the underlying support base is the essential core or heart. What do you put it into? See, this is what most people get it wrong. Most people are rooted in their church. Bad, bad, bad call. Because if you're rooted in your church only, that's not what God told you. He said we're rooted in Him. Belong to the church, join the church. But are you rooted in here? I don't want anybody rooted in harvest labor. Because it's just a building. It's an organization. I want you rooted in God. If you get rooted in God, God will place you where you need to grow at and where you need to bloom at. The key is you got to be willing to get rooted in here first. I was talking with some people and they blew me away because going to a church. I said, so why do you go there? And they said, because my great-great-grandmother went there. I said, so what do you do? They said, no. I said, so why do you go there again? My great-great-grandmother went there. My grandma went there. My mama went there. My granddaddy went there. My daddy went there. Everybody went there. I said, so what do you do there? I'm going to do nothing. So what do you get? Why just go there? I mean, that's okay. But that's not what God called us. Every person that God called, he called you for a specific purpose. If God plants you in a place, you've got to get rooted in the place. That's right. And getting rooted just don't mean you come every Sunday. You, know, you can't come here every week because we only do one Wednesday a month. The rest of the Wednesday belongs to you. But the key of it is you can't get rooted in that. Suppose you come here one Sunday and you don't get rooted in God, but you get rooted in the harvest, and I say something you don't like, and you disagree with, and you get mad, and you start, I ain't coming back no more. That preacher messed up. Well, see, you was never rooted in God. That's right. Because it's not based on the man, it's based on him. This is the key. You can't look at a man for him. You got to look at him and then see the man in him. See, when you look at me, you're not looking at me. You got to see the God in me. That's right. If you can't see the God in me, then I have not done what I'm supposed to do. I have not got rooted, and I have not turned my whole inside over to him. My inner being, my heart, my core, over to him. So as I get rooted, there's things that happen with the roots. If you're not rooted, how are you going to get nutrients to grow? Because see, if you're not rooted and you're just on the shallow, not every root grows on the top of the soil. Now there are some roots that do, but not all roots. You know, I, we got a lot of rain right now. Now, these plants here survive here because they stay outside. I can take them out there and they ain't going to die. No matter how much rain comes, it can rain for five days straight. These two plants here live. They are rooted really good in that. This is better than to come out of that. It's about the roots and about being enough. I have another tree over there that we bring it up next week. It's a pear tree. It's got to be redone and put in a bigger pot. Why? Because it can't bear fruit because its roots can't go no deeper. Because the roots are after living in the pot. I would hate to be at a limit to 
where my roots cause me to where I came from. Come on. Yeah. See, the thing about roots is it's your job to get rooted. Mm -hmm. He just placed you in a place. See, when God placed me here, it was my job to get rooted. But I didn't get rooted because before I, it was destiny for worship center. I mean, I don't know that. But because I was rooted in Him, it changed. It made me do the church. If I got rooted in that, I would laugh. It changed again. To a harvest ministry paper. What are you saying? I'm rooted in God and I know where God has me. And when it's time for me to be transferred somewhere else, God will let my leader know as he lets me know. I just don't leave and affect myself because I get mad because I want to. Because if I'm going to bloom, I have to bloom where I'm planted. Yeah. But if I'm going to be planted, I have to get roots. That's right. yeah. It's your job to get roots. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a coach. If you hear my voice, you can see how sometimes I do. That's because I've been coaching for so long. I don't coach anymore, but I coach for so long. The one thing I know about coaching young people is, is if you get them young, man, you can pour into them. Mm -hmm. It's great to get a freshman and work there for four years because I can get him established. You can get a freshman to root in something that carry him throughout his high school career, college, and life. You know, in the Smith, when he broke the NFL record for rushing. They gave him, you know, they bought him a car, they gave him all the money, but they asked him, who did he want? He could only have one VIP guest come to that ceremony and sit on stage with him. And they asked him, who did he want? Was it his dad or him? He said, no. He said, I want my high school coach. He didn't get his college coach. He didn't get his dad, his granddad. He got his high school coach. And when they asked him why, he said, because some of the things that he taught me wasn't just about football, but it was about life. And it caused me to be where I'm at now. He helped that young man get rooted. Imagine helping somebody get rooted to what they start producing. See, I mean, when it's got things on it, it's good. But I can't even take these are my wife uh, trees. These are not my flowers. <laughs> I have the, uh, it's not a green, most of them don't even have a black dog. They, they kill stuff. I can't grow. These are my wives. She has about 25 fruit trees and probably hundreds of flowers. But she grow them and they look so good. They're beautiful. But the flowers don't get the glory. My wife does. Even though they're the ones that look. People are always come with their prayer. Girl, you're gonna, girl, you got a great, great thumb. Man, you're doing a great job. How can I get mine to do like that? See, we want people to compliment us and give us and pick us up. And God has said, no, you just pick me up and then. Rooted. Can you be rooted? What does it take to be rude? Sometimes it takes pressure. This campus can hold 154 pounds of water. That's why they can survive in the desert. I'm, I'm just stu I mean, I've been studying roots, man. I was like, good gracious. This little thing here can hold 154 pounds of water. Because when it is in the desert, its roots will travel down as deep as they need to go to get to water. And when it gets to water, the roots will siphon it up, absorb it. These bad boys hold it. So when it comes to moss, 
and months when it doesn't rain and everything else in the desert is dying. It's cactus. They'll even bloom. I'm glad they came because how many of us could have gone through that? And God still used us to get glory. stage four cancer and God used that to get glory how many of you go through when the doctors tell you to abort every doctor tells you to abort your baby don't have it get rid of it she's going to have more complications than against all odds, you don't listen to the doctors. You trust God. Mm -hmm. And even up until the end, you trust God. See, that's being rooted. See, what being rooted means is when weather changes, maybe the outside changes, but the inside don't change. Now, if you ever walked into a flower that you thought was dead and you broke it off and you tried to break it off and it wouldn't quite break because it was still green on the inside? See, that's how some of us look because people know what we go through. They look at us and think that we're dead. But not knowing it's not what's on the outside, it's what's on the inside. Why? I've been rooted. Two years ago, when I went through that issue, me and my wife, we had to be rooted. It broke up. It broke us. But we had to be rooted. Our heart was broken. Spirit was overwhelmed. But we was rooted in Him. And because of that, we kept on, kept moving. It was in the midst of our first year of pastoring. First couple of months pastoring. We just kept moving. We went from that issue to the pandemic. Kept moving. See, what being rooted means is, God, you can trust me to bloom where you planted. That's right. Yes. Well, we think every bloom is not pretty. It doesn't matter if you think it's pretty. If it's moving. So my challenge to you Oh! 
only my little friend. They was full. Yeah. My little girl had that. So my wife took it out of the pot that we had it in and put it in a bigger pot. She transplanted it. It produced two big limbs. Thank you. 